the rev counter on our R32 Mark II Golf goes like this. So in this box, we have the solution to fix it. Ever since we had the conversion done in 2017 to an R32 engine, the rev counter hasn't worked. So in this box, witchcraft happens, and we should get the rev counter now working because this turns a CAN bus signal into an analog signal. You could call it a canalog box. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Ever since having our engine swapped to a 3.2 VR6, our taco has not worked because we're running the original Mark II Golf clocks to retain the retro feel inside the car. The downside is the engine uses a CAN signal for the taco, which due to there being six cylinders and a set of four cylinder analog clocks, they won't work together. This CAN converter box should resolve this. I mean, what's that? Six wires? Looks pretty straightforward to me. Let's crack on. So he thinks he can do it without the instructions. Let's be the wife and put them back in the car. Because he'll plainly need them. Okay, so she's gone. Now, I have no idea what I'm doing. I was just trying to make myself look good. So let's get those instructions and uh, see what I need to do. Right. It quickly became evident I didn't really know what I was doing. Time to call for some help. You all right? Yeah? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna need to come to yours because I have no idea what I'm doing with this. Yeah, I know you could do it in your sleep. All right, okay. All right, I'll be over in a minute. Bye. How are you getting on? Uh, yeah, yeah. What's that? I'm all right, uh, it's, uh, nothing. It's the instructions, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thought you said you knew what you were doing. Uh, well, I, I thought I did. But You're being cheapish. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I thought I did. You've called Ben, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Are I you have. going to Ben's? I'm going to have to go to Ben's. Yeah. That means you won't be back for dinner. No, no, I won't be back for dinner. Can you make sure it doesn't end up in the dog? <laughs> Now you might be wondering why, after seven years of having the engine conversion done on this car, am I having the rev counter fixed now? Now the reason really is because last time I took it on track, it was actually a little bit challenging. You don't know what the revs are doing, so when it comes to gear changes and things like that, it's quite difficult to work out where you are in the rev range. And yeah, if you're, I'm not chasing times or anything like that, but I just want to do the best that I can do. And so having a working rev counter is one of the reasons why. It's never been a high priority job. There's always been more important things to do on this car. As you can imagine, rust, head gasket, chains, and things like that, as you've seen in the past. But now is a good opportunity to get them done. And I've got this little magic box. I have a friend in Ben who will hopefully be able to help us out here. He could probably do it in his sleep in fairness. So yeah, we are gonna get this done. And we are gonna hopefully have a working rib counter for the first time in seven years. I'm actually very excited. Now there are multiple ways you can get an RPM signal to work on the Mark II Golf clocks from the 3.2 litre VR6. One of the ways is to use a diesel alternator, however you're then left with the questionable reliability if you're using a second hand part, or the big expense if you're to use a brand new one. And also, the alternator works on this thing, I don't really want to muck around with it. You don't know if this new one will fit. You're probably gonna to have to put extra bracketry in place to get it to work, different belts, etc. It's probably quite a big job. The other thing which I've seen people do and actually get it to work is to splice into the coils. There are six of them on this car 
and therefore you're going to have all that extra wiring you've got to find somewhere to route that wiring and also you're yeah you're splicing into coils which i don't really like the idea of so i have got this taco converter box i'm at ben's we're going to get this rev counter to work here we have a list of the wires of the can converter so we're just going to have a look at what we've been supplied and what is on the car all right let's have a look need. start at the top black and purple 12 volt switched power okay we'll need that somewhere from the back of your fuse box ground same again black red output rpm coil pulse for mark one mark two we've got a mark two with mark two clocks so we need that so gray red output 12 volt for mark three or corrado we don't need that and looking on here it's not not even populated it would have been probably there yeah we haven't got one. so we haven't got that you probably told them when you ordered it yeah. blue white output vehicle speed we don't need that because we've got the cable driven uh, speed from the gearbox orange brown input for cam bus low orange black input for cam bus high so we've got those there twisted pair yeah twisted pair for cam white vehicle speed again don't need that so these two you're not going to need at all it's basically don't need do need do need Excellent. let's go find the cam wires on your car okay now i was instructed to remove the loom tape from the ecu wiring and look for the orange twisted pair wires which we have here which is on the connector and as you can see straight away we have it there so now we need to see where that goes and try and trace trace that back and tap into it it's got the ecu in this car but where else is it going to be used it's got no mark IV era cluster no abs where could it go we have an obd plug which works and it has got the can wires we need so we should be able to tap in right here because we don't need the white and the blue and white we're going to chop these short so we can fold them back later and keep them out of the way easy for me to do Not those ones. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, our little can converter to Mark II rev counter box, the wiring for it at least, is now temporarily hooked up. We've got the, here we've got the can wires, can high, can low. Uh, we've just spliced into where they would have gone to the, or where they do go to the uh, OBD plug. Uh, we needed to power it, so there's this handy fuse holder here that the, uh, the guy who did the conversion originally has left in. And we have gone to the G1 connector, which if we can see all the way down here where the screwdriver's going. G1-4 mm -hmm. uh, is still used, but it has, a, it has a, like a double wire on it, so we've used that for power that wasn't being used. And G1-12 is this one and that is where the original uh, signal from the coil on a carb mark ii would have gone in or any mark ii but that's that's what we're using here and i think that is everything so that is just all that's left is to plug it in and see what happens check it's the right way around that's in and the key on. What do you get? Way! How good is that? Should we fire it up? Go for it. Ha, oh, yes. I still can't see it. Aha! Rev counter at last. Now we've just got to tidy this up. Now we've got the can converter box all wired in, looking nice and neat. We've tidied up the OBD 
connector wiring as well. So we are ready to fire it up. Oh yes. Well done Ben, thank you very much. Sorry that again. <laughs> no, <it's funny. laughs> <laughs>